Greetings, everyone. We are officially live, unless my computer is lying to me. Uh, hello, for those that are watching live and for those that are watching after. Uh, welcome to or welcome back to People with Jay. I'm Jay, but not Jay. Some people actually think my name is Jay because that's how I introduced myself, but my name is actually Jeremy. Anyway, welcome to the channel. Uh, this is one of our live interviews. We also do lots of other things like my own recipes. We do cookbook reviews fairly often and a lot of other fun informational things like that. And while we wait for people to load in, I'll just quickly give some shout outs to some of the people in the audience who I know are very excited for this interview like I am. We've got Tanya from London, Ontario, big fan of Carly's. Uh, Kimberly, who says they don't buy cookbooks, but they read, they can't read. Oh, right, because Kimberly's blind. But but you can, you can hear the cookbooks and you can hear our reviews. So I know I appreciate that. Maureen's book just arrived. Janet's got their copy as well. So very, very excited. I know more people are going to pour in here, and I don't want to waste any more time because I'm so excited for this conversation. Uh, I can't even tell you how excited I am to talk to today's guest. And if you spend any time on social media following plant-based creators, I can't imagine you haven't come across Plant You and its queen, Carly Bedrug. In addition to amassing literally millions of followers over various platforms, she also has an amazing meal planner app. She's a New York Times bestselling cookbook author, and her new book, Scrapping Cook Scrapping, Scrappy Cooking, is available now. And I said this to her when I first got it. I think it might literally be the last plant-based cookbook anyone ever needs. And I say that as someone who's kind of working on my own. So, and I'm also very honored to call her a fellow Canadian and share a love of our favorite food, which is the raspberry. Oh, uh, you're a raspberry fan. Jeremy, thank you so much for that lovely introduction. It's a fine line between raspberries and cherries. It's real, real on the border there. Raspberries well, went out for me. Like cherries, not even a, a strawberries would be a close second. Nice. Yes. Well, thank you. Uh, first of all, happy release day because today's the official release, right? Today is the official release and I have just been loving your review video. It made my day, my days, and uh, I'm just so grateful. So, so grateful for people like you who are really supporting the book and all of your kind words. And we always need more plant-based cookbooks. So I can't wait till you put one out. Well, bless you for being brave enough to to let our family get it in advance and, and review it because we we uh, you never know how my kids are going to react and they don't care about care, about sa share share saving anyone's feelings. That's what makes it great though because you know it's actually real. You know, if they everybody was kind of faking it and whichever else then it's it's not as authentic, it's not as as real and people aren't actually seeing what the recipes look like. I just I think there those videos do so well and people love them so much because they know your family's authentic reaction and you just seem like such a lovely like very loving family Cana very canadian right <laughs> when i was watching it I, I we were talking beforehand but i don't know how many people watching this are canadian but there's some like clues that you see in the video that made me immediately know wait is this, is this guy from ontario too <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, well, we I think we have the same as on the same scrappy, low budget, you know, cook, uh, cooking uh, troves and, and, and holes and whatnot. <laughs> no frills. And no frills. Troys. <laughs> Troys, yeah. Well, we don't have, is Troys like a, a berry thing? What's Troys? No, I said President's Choice. Oh, President's Choice, President's yeah. President's Choice, no frills. And I don't know what else. That That's probably the most affordable grocery store where I am, no frills. For sure. That's the one we use a lot. And they're also, and we'll get into this because we're going to talk all about the scrappy cooking thing. But the one thing we've been loving about them, and it's not just a them thing. I don't know if you use like the flash food app at all. I've heard of this, but I've never used it. Do you oh, use it a lot? Oh, dude, this is going to be this for you for the scrappy cooking angle. It's so just to give you some context, my wife after work today is going to pick up two boxes. Like, and when I say boxes, I mean like, this is a terrible representation of a box, but like something like this. Uh, last time we got one, there was eight apples, six oranges, three avocados, um, and a bunch and and other and a whole bunch of cucumbers and some zucchinis. It was five dollars. So it does it have you ever used the Too Good to Go app? It's very similar. Very it's similar. basically the same thing, but this is specifically, I think it's like, oh, I think it's, it's owned by like the Loblaws oh. no or they're partnered with them. 
So basically with the flash food, and, and I know this is in other parts of Canada. I don't know if it's in the U.S. though. So you go on and it, and it knows where you are if you tell it that you can use this location. And it basically just, you can pick any of the, it shows where the grocery stores around you are. You click on it and it'll just show you what's available there at the moment. That's incredible. And it's a lot of stuff like I know you talked about in some of your other interviews, like the idea of how like, you know, bananas in particular, are one of the most wasted food items. And so like, they'll take all those single bananas that normally get tossed out and they'll put them all in one box. And like, you know, and any other person who's watched our channel knows that bananas are gold. You know, it's like yeah. it doesn't matter if they're brown or spotty that I want them even more when they're like that. I know that the worst thing I find about grocery delivery, because I use it a lot as a food blogger, is um, I always it's green bananas that come and then yeah. you can't use them for a few days and you're just like, Oh, I want to make muffins or something like that. But that you're absolutely... ordering like a week in advance of the bananas you need. Yeah, exactly. That's almost how you have to plan it. If you're making anything baking wise or even smoothies, you don't want to put like a green banana in a smoothie. No, I, but... I live in little India in Toronto and there used to be this, uh, just recently they closed was this great little mom and pop grocery store called BJ supermarket. And they used to sell like their produce that was about to turn and they'd always have a box of bananas. So I could walk in there and buy like 40 bananas for less than a dollar. Oh, incredible. And it was just like, you just instantly peel them, chop them up, put them in the freezer and nice cream all day. Everything like, you know, yeah. you know how to use it all. Amazing. And we haven't even got into any of my questions. Look at us. We could just, this yeah. is gonna be a six hour interview. Because, <laughs> uh, um, anyway. So for, so I was like, happy release day. I'm, so honored that you're spending part of it with oh, us. Oh gosh, I'm honored. I'm thrilled to be on here. This is right in our wheelhouse, right? It's awesome to connect with other people in the whole food plant based community. Yeah, because you've been doing you've been doing the the rounds. And are you going on a vacation at some point soon after this? I hope so. I hope so. I mean, I'm scheduled to fly out to California in a couple of weeks to make up some interviews that I had to, had to cancel. So that that won't be a vacation. <laughs> But that's where my head's at right now. I'm like, okay, I got this. After April's done, I think then I can kind of shut my eyes and think about being on a beach somewhere, maybe. Amazing, amazing. So uh, for those watching, uh, if you've got any questions you want to throw to Carly, uh, put them in the comments down below. Put a cue in front of it because it just helps me kind of navigate them a bit better. And later on in this conversation, I'll start getting to those. But let, let them, I'll let them pile up a bit. But don't be shy. Uh, you're talking to a wealth of knowledge of just plant-based cooking in particular, but also just ways to like be scrappy and save money. Let's talk about the book. I'm going to pull up my notes because I don't want to miss anything. Cause it, oh, <laughs> cheers. <laughs> Cause there's so much to talk about. So apologize. Uh, don't mind me if I'm just reading here for a second. No, no problem. There's just so much stuff. I, I, I said this when I first got, I, I was lucky I got, before this even arrived in my mailbox early, which I squealed when I saw it, I was able to get like, I got like a PDF of like the almost finished book, which was so cool to see. Cause I could see some of your edits. Yeah. That, the... was, that was not supposed to be going out to people. I'm, I'm sure. Was... But as someone who's like working on something, I'm like, Oh, this is cool to see. <laughs> when I'm telling my publisher, sorry, can you please remove this? We need to swap this. I saw that after I was MIA for a few weeks. And then I saw it after I'm like, this has been going out to everybody. Um, but it's okay. It's okay. Because you know, it was, cool, but it was also it was great because I'm like, so, some of the ingredients I was like, that's not Carly's type of ingredient. I was like, oh, there's her swap. It was just really, really interesting from a nerdy food person's point of view. Yeah, just no, someone writing a cookbook, I'm sure. <laughs> To get a see a bit behind the curtains, like, oh, this is cool. And this is so for me, it was a cool educational thing. And also, I just felt so special to have like that advanced of a version. But I just sat, I got it on like a Saturday morning and I just sat there honestly in awe of it. Like, uh, I'm going to gush here because I literally, I said it in the intro, I think this is a masterpiece. Thank you. Because yeah. it's not only so, there's so few, and you know, this is someone who, you know, we, a lot of big chunk of our YouTube channel for those that are watching is doing reviews of cookbooks. You know, it's something we started doing just on a fluke and we found people really, really liked it and we got to eat it every day anyway. So it's, it's an easy thing for us to do and a lot of fun for us. But most of the time people know this, I spend a lot of time talking about the swaps I'm going to do because most cookbooks are not whole food plant-based. Right. And that's how we try to eat most of the time. And I'd say 
literally everything, if not 95% of this book is that way as well. So for those of us eating that way, it's such a, a gift, but you go beyond that. It's not even that it's like what, what this book goes into, this book does things that I've never seen a cookbook do. Like your first cookbook blew my mind in just how it's so, it's so minimalistic and yet not like this format you've made with your infographics for those that don't know, like Carly's not only got these beautiful, simple photos of the food, but she also has every single ingredient over here. Sorry. Can't get my left or right prop. Every single ingredient with a little photo, right? So for people that are just starting to cook this way and eat, you know, it's so refreshing for them looking. Like, oh, that is the thing I'm thinking about. You know, for people that aren't as familiar in the kitchen, right? I need to carry you around and be the spokesperson for this book. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll be your hype man all day long. <laughs> that's incredible. Thank but you. Like that, that's the kind of thing that I look at that and I'm like, well, why isn't that the template for every cookbook moving forward? And they should give you like, you should get royalties from it. Oh, but. <laughs> I think it's the struggle though. Like, and I think about it too, is if people want their food and their photos to look beautiful. And a bit of that is sacrificed in this infographic format. Like oh, <laughs> you have, don't, just the, you don't think so? I, I struggle I with it a bit. Like, I, yeah, go ahead. This is definitely, I use my own cookbooks a lot, like, and I find something about my brain understands this format as simple as it is better than anything else. But there is something about opening a, a regular cookbook and seeing like a beautiful styled image with like natural light casting on it and stuff. But I'm locked in. <laughs> this is definitely no. what people <laughs> love about the plant you cookbooks. Here's the thing, and this is like kind of a preview of the way I'm approaching the book we're working on. Like, I see those photos, and I'm like, it's great if you've got a stylist and someone to professionally light your food. Of course, it'll look like that. What I like, and I don't mean this might sound like it's not a compliment, but it is. This food looks like the food I'm going to make. Yes, that's important to me as well. You know, and so like that's our caveat too. like, you know, we're going to have a disclaimer in our book saying every picture you see of this food was then eaten by us afterwards. Exactly. This is how the food actually looks, you know, and I and that's how I feel when I look at your stuff. You know, it, it might not be as stylized as some books I've seen, but I also look at that and I'm like, my food will never look like that. And it also sets like a, an unrealistic bar for people that I think this ends up making you feel like you're not good enough. Right, right. And it, there's a huge factor here when you're endeavoring on a plant based lifestyle is already there's that kind of in intimidation factor if you've never cooked a plant based meal in your life, right. And then if you look at it, and it looks complicated, I think then you're just like, I'm not even going to try. So that was really the motivation behind the infographic concept to begin with. I'm like, let's break this down. <laughs> and it's not difficult. We're cooking with plants. It's going to be fun. So I'm glad that carries through and has obviously resonated with the people who have my first book. And I hope the second as well. Yeah. No. Now, will you be like tremendously insulted when people start stealing this from you? I feel like that's inevitable. And no, I think that it at the end of the day, I mean, it's not that complicated. It's just no. ingredients above a dish. But, I don't think that I can I can go after anybody for it. No, but also it's the kind of thing I look. You can you can change this up, right? Yeah, you make it your own. Yeah. yeah. But for me, like just when I got Plant You the first time, I looked at it and I was like, God damn, that's so simple and genius. Why is nobody? It's just one of those things where you're like, how do you make sliced bread better? It's like, well, that's how you do it. You you. It's just so simple. But it's also one of those things you go, well, why didn't, why has nobody else done that? Like, what a great, simple idea. Anyway, Thank I just, I, uh, it's just one of the millions of things. But again, and we're going to get into way more stuff. But one thing, I mean, especially there's so many things in this book, like you talk about food waste a lot, which is great. And we'll talk about that more as we go along in this conversation. But the thing that's in this book, and I, and I know you've talked about this a million times, but I just want our audience to be aware of it is this one section of the book that is another version of an index that is brilliant. And, and you know what I'm talking about. It's, it's called Got This, Make That. I'm glad we're talking about this because it's my favorite part of the book. Well, it should be. It's, yeah. it's, it's another one of those things. There's like, of course, why has nobody ever done that? Um, and it go, it's, you know, it's multiple pages long. 
and it just lists every kind of ingredient that usually by the end of the week, you're looking in your fridge going, what do I do with that? And the answer is on these two pages of the book. And then you've also got this other awesome section called kitchen raid recipes, which is basically like how we cook a lot of the times, you know, the, our meals at the end of the week are always some kind of a stir fry, a bowl or a soup where it's like, whatever we got left, we're turning into something. You know, so for those people that I know in our audience that are less comfortable in the kitchen, like that's why I say this book is a godsend, because whether you're already comfortable in the kitchen and just looking for new things, it's got that. And especially at the end, you've got that wonderful section just about your ferments and powders and all that other kind of stuff that just like the homesteader in me is just like, oh, I'm going to make my own vanilla. I think one of the um, the concerns when I was putting out this book is that the Scrappy Cooking series on my social media, which really took off, is really based around this concept of using scraps. And it's almost can be like, I don't know, a little tongue in cheek sometimes. Like we're going, we're going real far with the scraps, like banana peel, bacon and stuff like that. And what I think it does is facilitates a conversation about food waste, which is obviously this massive issue that a lot of people aren't talking about. But when I was writing my cookbook, I really wanted it to be just this resource with regular recipes that you cook from every day, but that help you become an empowered cook enough to make substitutions in your home, own home so you're not wasting food. So not necessarily like you don't have to be this crazy scrappy chef where you're where you're saving every bit of the plant. There are recipes where you can interchange the vegetables, interchange the proteins, interchange the grains so that you're not heading to the grocery store, buying more unnecessary food and wasting because that's really the low hanging food of the, for lack of better words, low hanging fruit of reducing waste. It's not bringing the food into your house in the first place to waste it. Yeah. Yeah. And for those that are, I know there's already people in the comments going, you know, I have to get this book. I haven't got it yet. I do have a link in the description down below. So while you're watching this or after, hit that up, make sure you get it. You know, your first book was already a bestseller. I can't imagine this one isn't on its way to doing so if not already. Um, because it's just, again, uh, gush, gush, gush. So I'd love to um, talk about, because there's a great, and, and it, there's no way to dance around this. Um, for those that don't know in the audience, Carly lost her mother a few weeks before this book was published. Uh, and I know that you have an inscription in the book that it's for her, but I also know that your love of scrappy cooking was inspired by her. And, and a lot of times in this channel, we talk about what brought you to plant-based eating. And I don't necessarily need to go into that with you because I'm sure you've told that story a million times, but I'd love you to kind of like shed a light on that and just like what inspired this love of, of scrappy cooking. Cause I think it stemmed with, with your mom. Yeah. So I haven't been able to talk about my mom yet without crying. So if I cry, I apologize. Um, I mean, I shouldn't apologize, but you get the sentiment there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so my mom passed away exactly a month ago from cancer. And um, really what inspired my plant-based journey to begin with, I've told the story a million times, is uh, my dad had stage two colon cancer when I was growing up. And he went through chemo and surgery. And this was much worse, obviously, with my mom. She was diagnosed with a really rare, aggressive cancer about two years ago and was given one year to live when she was diagnosed. So that was right when I had signed the deal for Scrappy Cooking. She got diagnosed a week after. And at the time, I was like, I can't write this book. Like, this, my mom and I were closest of any mother daughter could be. Um, and my sister ended up leaving her job and helping me write the book. I thought about hiring a ghost writer. Thank God I did not do that. I remember I was Googling, like I had just, my mom was diagnosed. She had like gone to the doctor's appointment. They said nine months to a year, at literally the worst nightmare that anybody can ever hear as a daughter. And um, I started Googling like, ghost writers, cookbook ghost writers, what am I going to do? Like, I'm going to have to like go to all my mom's appointments, which I did. Um, my sister ended up leaving her job, worked with me full time and we did it. And oh my gosh, it was so much better for my sister coming to work with me because I am like such an unorganized, crazy, creative person. And then she is very like analytical and organized. So that is a lot of the reason that this book is what it is. 
uh, was for her for her organization. And anyways, so my mom has passed away, but really you're back to your question of what inspires scrappy cooking. My mom was just a very scrappy individual. And what I mean by that is she just embodied that trait. Like she was very outspoken, taught me to always go after what I want. Um, scrappy in the sense that she was even always putting like things like coffee and chili, uh, using leftovers and yeah, like very embodied that. So I knew when I wrote the book that it was going to be dedicated to her and she got to see the dedication. She got to see the physical book, which was so special. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. So to sum it up, lots of cancer in my family, definitely a big driver of doing what I do. Yeah. And it has been the weirdest month of my life. I, I bet. <laughs> No, I remember when I first, when I heard, I was like, I can't imagine. It's just going through, like, I lost my own mother uh, to cancer when I was a teenager. And, I, and we had that same doctor's visit where it's like, she's got this this much time to that amount of time. And your brain just, is like, I'm sorry. Why? What? Like, and then you just can't think about anything else and nothing else. And then, of course, that time usually isn't even as long as they say it is, too. And then there's often, like if any of the listeners have experienced, and I know Jeremy, you've experienced this, when you're going through like someone that close to you with cancer, it is just a constant stream of whiplash. Like there's a little glimmer of hope and then it's horrible and then it's hope and then it's horrible. And it's just emotional, like, war. Oh, and, and it won't. I remember one of the hardest parts I had was like literally five years later, I was pulling something out of a closet and a smell hit her smell hit me yeah. that I hadn't smelt in five years. And I was a ball. Anyway, we're, we could talk about our, our deceased mom. For, that's a different episode. <laughs> Anyways. Back to the dead mom's podcast. Uh, yeah, no. Anyway, I, the only reason I wanted to bring up your mom, because I know because she was so instrumental in just like your your love of cooking and, and your style of cooking. So that's why I wanted to bring it up. Yeah. And she actually um, she went vegetarian. So my dad and I, I went vegan. My dad and I, my dad went predominantly plant based, but she went vegetarian strictly for the animals before <laughs> that jump so she was really the catalyst which i've never talked about much to going to going plant-based huge animal lover so and then one thing i do want to mention is when my mom passed away i was set to be going on a plane to california for all of these huge podcasts and then a new york the following week and i was at the hospital with my mom we had no idea it was like going south and then the doctor said you need to stay so I was like, oh my goodness. And this was all promotion for Scrappy. So <laughs> that was supposed to come out this week. So I had to cancel all of it, which at the end of the day was obviously like so minuscule compared to what my was going on with my mom. But I was very worried about this launch. But if anybody is listening, I just have to say that the plant-based community and people like you, Jeremy, Oh my goodness. It is just incredible to see the way they wrap their arms around people who are putting out books and messages they believe in because you guys have just lifted me up and I just feel so much gratitude for that. Well, it's, it, I mean, here's the thing. It's like, you, you have to know that you are such a beloved figure in this community. Um, I know when we started doing the review videos on the channel, the most requested book was the original plant you Oh. And I held it off for so long only because I'm like, I already have that book and I already love it. So it's like it's it felt like a disservice to it. But, like I, but I didn't want to not do it anyway. But it's just, you know, I, I can't even imagine, you know, making a cookbook is such a daunting task to begin with. Doing it when you're going through the worst period of your life. I, I imagine having your sister there was such a, a comfort in so many mm -hmm. ways, too. Huge. And I mean, we would be tag teaming like I, I my mom and dad lived 20 minutes down the road. So like I would be very I was very involved in the whole thing as like a daughter <laughs> obsessive does. And I would be at her chemo appointments and my sister would be here retesting recipes. It was like a joint effort. So that makes me very proud of this book. Like I, I, just, for I sure. bet it would be impossible to look at this book like at any point in your life in the future and just not think of her and just like this mm -hmm. time period and what a and kind of what a weird gift it probably was in a weird in a weird way too 
a nice distraction during when all all it seems when somebody has a cancer diagnosis that's all you talk about right so this was something else to talk about and a nice distraction and now that it's here i feel like it's a living kind of legacy yeah. anyways anyways Ed mom's club podcast, Ed mom's po podcast. that's the <laughs> <laughs> i almost made it through i mean i tear it up a bit there but i think i'm improving as time co goes on so thank you um, my pleasure to put you through the ringer so that you could <laughs> you could flex that muscle. So I love you've already talked about it a little bit, but I'd love to talk more about your approach to this book. Like just from because so let's let's walk it back to you. Make plant you. It's you know it's already a giant success because of your social media and all that wonderful stuff you do on there. And if you don't follow Carly on social media yet, it's so fun and entertaining and informational. But it's just like plant you's the first one's done. You know, at what, how does this get born? Like at what point, I, I imagine it must have come out of some of the social media stuff, right? Yeah. So right after my first cookbook came out, I think around that time, it was February two years ago, and I had been posting these scrappy cooking episodes. And they were really inspired by the fact that I had heard that 30 to 40% of all food in the US and Canada ends up in landfills, which is a really bad thing for our environment. It emits methane gas, contributes to global warming. Um, I like to use the statistic food waste contributes more emissions than the airline industry, which is really shocking. So it was felt like nobody was talking about this. So I threw up an orange peel candy recipe one day on Instagram and walked away from my phone, called it scrappy cooking. I think I said, stop throwing out your orange peels. And what do you know, come back to my phone about an hour later and millions of people had viewed the video and were going crazy about the concept. So as I started churning out these episodes, I think I've done a hundred now in two years, I just immediately knew that this would be the subject of my second cookbook. And again, I didn't want to take it so literally that it was just like about scraps. Um, it was considered by my publisher. But then as we kind of fleshed it out, I'm like, no, I want audiences of my first book to resonate with this one. I need it to be whole food, plant based, accessible, infographic. And I just want the recipes to really empower people to be making substitutions so that they can use up some of the food that they commonly wouldn't and then additionally be able to swap things in and out because that's it's kind of to your point earlier where you say like you're making stir fries and soups and stews and whichever else at the end of the week to clean out the fridge we do that more more nights of the week than not and i think that some people there's a barrier there they don't just don't know how to do that, which is okay. But I wanted to teach people that way because I think it, it's healthier too. Well, and I wanted to point out too, uh, like there's this other thing that's in your cookbook that I, I I might have seen here and there a little bit, but the one thing that you don't see enough is throughout the book, you've got all these little things called save the scraps. And you indicate that, uh, you know, whatever you don't use here, use it in this other recipe here. And I know in particular, when we were reviewing this book, there was one in particular where you're like, well, half a can of coconut milk. And my brain's always like, I'm never gonna use that other half a can before it goes bad or weird. And literally in the in the chapter, it's like, use the other half here. And so it did. Um, but it's just so great, right? Because so many people, especially trying starting out, like I've said, they just, there's so much food waste because we want to try a recipe, but it doesn't call for a whole thing or we don't need the entire bok choy or whatever. Or we just need half the cabbage. Right. So it's just like what I love about this cookbook. And I wish this I could say this for every cookbook was like this cookbook is written by someone who wants to cook from it themselves. Yes. One hundred percent. Like I I just have to think about it from start to finish. What I find is missing when I'm going through a cookbook and then like kind of cross go backwards from there. Um, I try to think of everything. <laughs> I'm sure there's things I haven't, but I try no. to think of everything when I'm when I'm writing these books. And I think for some people, books are just like a notch in their career yeah. as a food blogger. For me, I just love a book. I love a cookbook. As a kid, I wanted to be an author and they are, I want to write more and I'm just obsessed with them. And it was really cool when I put out, put out my first book. I didn't expect this, but there's something about putting out a cookbook, and you'll find this when you put your own out, is that people 
cook from cookbooks and it impacts their lives in such a more dramatic way than a recipe on a blog does mm. because they're following multiple recipes in your book. They're going back to it, you know, and like it, you don't get lost on the internet and there's something really special about that. Like yeah. I, lo I love a book. They're writing little notes. Yeah, exactly. They're writing notes. They're, they're folding pages. Like I love it all. Yeah. A good cookbook is, is well worn and there's stains on it. And there's just, yeah, like you said, full exactly. everything. Yeah. Exactly. You can tell which of my cookbooks I love the most by how awful they look. <laughs> yeah, there's like sauce splattered on the pages. These are stuck together. Yeah. <laughs> that's, the way, uh, that's the way it should be. Yeah. So walk me through just for people, you know, that are kind of interested and nerdy about cooking like myself. Like what's, you know, when you're working either by yourself or with your sister, like what's an average day look like if there is such a thing? when you're kind of recipe testing or, or we're trying to work something out, like what's, or if you want to even walk us through like one particular recipe, if you can think of one off the top of your head, but you know, give us a window into what that kind of looks like. Yeah. I remember when I put out my first cookbook, it was so crazy because it was so busy. The launch was just way busier than I had ever been in my life. And I remember telling my assistant at the time that things are going to calm down after this book is out. I'm going to have more time, blah, 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 blah. The opposite happened. I feel like every day is just a crazy whirlwind and so busy. But it, in terms of a recipe testing day, which is what I try to carve out a couple of days a week when I'm writing a cookbook, is um, sometimes I'll start from an idea. So oftentimes through Scrappy, I would start from like, okay, kind of like that idea we were talking about earlier, what, what recipes lend themselves to cleaning out the fridge? Or do I have a scrap here uh, that I don't know how to use and I want to use up in a recipe? So a good example of this would be the lemon peel pesto recipe in the book, which is really a riff off a pesto recipe in my first book, but you replace the basil with lemon peels. And it's really good. It's one of my favorite recipes in the book. But the first time I tested it, I put the entire lemons, so like I scrubbed them and then just threw them in the blender. The pith made them so, it made it so bitter, so bitter. So that was like a complete failure. And I had to go back and like figure out, okay, if I peel them with like a potato peeler and I avoid the pith and, and put them in here and then squeeze the lemon. So it, it can, sometimes it's like a hit off the top and sometimes it's not. And then for this book, I was really fortunate. Um, I was able to hire a recipe tester. And a lot of people will hire people from their community to test recipes, but I just, I needed it to be very streamlined because we had so much going on that I hired a dedicated person who does this for a living. And she did Healthy Girl Kitchen's cookbook as well. So okay. Danielle, who's a really good friend of mine, we recommended. Just, we just uh, reviewed that book a little while ago. Oh, I love Danielle. So she recommended um, this recipe tester. Her name is Trish. And so then once we had tested the recipes twice or three times, depending on if it needed it, then it would go off to her. And then she would provide like very thorough feedback, which was what was needed, <laughs> truly. And uh, then it would go through another iteration if needed or be finished. So that's kind of the recipe testing process that I do for cookbooks and then a similar process for uh, video recipes that I do as well. Amazing. Yeah. I'm, I, I live with three recipe testers. There you uh, go. We are working. We are, we are going to re reaching out to some people in our community for the stuff we're working on, but I made a chili yesterday. It's my, it's called my son's chili that I'm working on a recipe that he actually created. Oh. And, I, and I had a similar thing to your lemon thing yesterday where I was like, I wonder if I take these dried ancho chilies and normally I would take the seeds out and just blend up the, the you know, the dried chilies. I wonder if, what, what happens if I don't, if it'll be that much more spicy. The answer is very <laughs> my son's my son's reaction. I wish I taped it. Was are you trying to kill me? That's the best. You need to put that in the head note of the recipe. Like if it makes it in a book. My yeah. when I first made this, my son asked if I was trying to kill him. Yeah. That's if you want it to be hella spicy, keep the seeds in. The one story I love to tell is for my first book. The recipe that gave me the worst time <laughs> was a vegan meatloaf. I don't know what it was between the chickpeas and the flax. And you know what goes into these whole food plant-based meatloafs. Like it was not forming. Like every time I would remove it from the pan, it turned to mush. But obviously like 
at the time, especially, I didn't have money and I also did not want to be wasting food. So every night my husband would get home for a week and it would be, and he wasn't my husband at the time. He was boyfriend or fiance. And I'm surprised he went through with marrying me after this, but I would, we would have this mushy chickpea meatloaf. And to this day, we do not eat vegan meatloaf in this house because (laughs) you're scarred. You scarred so many days of the same flavor of, and then eventually I did get it. And it, it, it is a well-loved recipe for my first book, but. I'm going to tell you the ground beef recipe you have in this book uh, is my, my wife and my daughter, those who be watched our videos in the channel, they know that they don't like faux meats at all. So the idea of like a ground beef recipe is the most off-putting concept to them in the world. They adored it. Oh, I'm so glad I saw that. And that that was like a real um, out on a branch recipe. Like I just got really into using sunflower seeds because they were so affordable. They're so affordable. Brilliant. Yes. Well, and also, and I don't know if this was intentional, but it's also school safe, nut free. It was intentional because having a community of my size, I'm very, um, receptive to feedback and what I get all the time I had no idea but so many people have nut allergies yeah and then they can't bring the food to school I didn't like I didn't know this before (laughs) endeavoring on this but it's a real problem so I want the recipes to be accessible to as many people as possible yeah and you even made eggplant something worth using yeah you're you're not an eggplant fan nobody really likes eggplant if they're I don't either but I like to put it in things you know and I, I want to get nerdy about that. So what made you go, oh, eggplant will make this, give it the right texture or whatever it is? I think it was, I feel the same way as eggplant <laughs> do about mushrooms. And it's that like, I don't really want to taste them, but I want to include more of them in my food because they're so good for you. Yeah. And then that was kind of the idea. I'm like, I'm using mushrooms in a lot of things. A lot of people don't like mushrooms, but they're hidden anyway. So I'm going to try eggplant in place of it. And you could totally use another plant. I have to let my dog out. She is jumping up on the thing. I can bring you with me once. Yeah, let's let's meet the dog. Uh oh, do we lose Carly? Well, you can meet my puppy, but she jumps up on the um, the window when she wants out. And I don't want her to have an accident in here. That's okay. There you go, Peach. I found it. I, I, I somehow magically flipped to it. This is the uh, <clears throat> the ground beef recipe for those that want to, while Carly is getting the dog going. Uh, and, <laughs> and it's also featured in our review video we did of Scrappy Cooking. So you can see it in there. Everyone needs to watch. Oh. Technical difficulties, Thanks. stand by. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Everybody needs to watch the review video. So good. So good. You guys are going to have all the plant-based cookbooks calling you up. We, we've we had a few people now send stuff out. We I will tell you, we don't always get the reaction we got from you. We had one person never responded to me after I sent them the video to, so they could see it in advance. Oh, oh you're going to have to tell me. At, can, you, can you hear? Can you hear I me? I can hear you. You've gone. Well, your video will catch up, I'm sure. Um, I'm plugged in to the router. It's all good. I think it was the moving around. Maybe it took a second to to check around, but I can still hear you. You can hear me, right? Yes. Okay, great. Yeah. So we, we've been lucky. We have had a, a couple people reach out and send us their books now. Uh, but like I said, we had one very, it was sad. It was just a sad, because re- we went, it wasn't even a bad review of the book, but the person just did not respond to any of my emails after uh, after we sent them our review. Oh, that's um, so sad. Yeah, uh, it was just it was it was one of those things that made me go, oh, maybe we shouldn't do these with maybe we shouldn't like have people send us stuff because that felt weird when that happened. But that's literally it's been such, it was such a small reaction compared to others we've had that I just kind of went, you know what, you can't control it, move on because there's so many more lovely people like you that. You know, and it's not even that you need to have a thick skin. It's just you need to have to realize that not everyone's tastes are the same as yours. Well, exactly. And not everybody's going to like the same thing. And, you know, like that's that's the realism of it. I think if you were going to fake and go on there and get a cookbook and everybody be like, we love everything, then what is the point of watching the video? 
that's just it. You know, uh, that is exactly it. And like you said before, it's like, it's, we, you know, when with us, it's like, if we like it, we like it. <laughs> we don't, you'll find out real fast. I think that's uh, awesome. I'd love to ask you, um, because it is a whole food plant-based cookbook and, you know, in most people's minds that haven't eaten this way for as long as we have, they go, oh, so the food's cardboard, you know, they don't realize how much, how easy it is to flavor stuff. So how do you strike a balance between health and flavor when it comes to creating your recipes? Yeah, I mean, this is tough, right? Uh, and I think especially there's so many people in the whole food plant based community, and I think maybe yourself as well that are oil free. And it can be tough to inject flavor into food without oil. And I really came when I first went plant based, I really came at it, I had learned about Dr. Gregor, Dr. Furman, I was following Chef AJ. So it was very, very like whole food plant based oil free, clean and delicious food. And as I started cooking that way, I just learned that the plants that Mother Nature provides are the deliciousness. Like even I always give the example of like people eating meat, they're eating ribs or they're eating like smoked barbecue. It's the seasonings in the plants that are giving flavor. So to then go, oh, plants aren't good or they're like some people think it's going to taste like cardboard is nonsensical because <laughs> because plants, plants bring the plants bring the party. So I think now I find it easy. I mean, I think it's like you gotta you gotta up the seasoning. You gotta add some soy sauce, add some salt and pepper, um, add some oil if you're eating oil, and it's a, that balance of kind of like uh, salt, fat, acid, heat, right? In yep. each in each recipe, and that's something I do think about. Like if I feel like I'm tasting a soup and there's something missing, oftentimes they'll be like, "Oh, I didn't add anything acidic." So, and the greatest. This is what I always tell people. When you're cooking plant-based, the stakes are low. You're not cooking a chicken breast and worried about getting vanilla everywhere and being undercooked by the time you eat it. Like you cook a soup and you undersalted it, you add some salt. You cook a soup and you it's too salty or something's off, you add some more broth. Like the stakes are low, you can usually bring it back. And that's what makes plant-based cooking so much fun. That's just it. And, 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 and for the people that are nervous about starting off, it's like, just get in there and play. Like you're only going to learn by experimenting and failing a lot. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And the thing about the mistake I often see people make when they go vegan or plant-based is they'll head to the freezer section of their grocery store and they'll be like, okay, so I'm making tacos tonight. I'm going to replace the ground beef with beyond meat or another product like that. Not that there's anything wrong with those products inherently. I still eat beyond meat at like a barbecue in the summer. But yeah. I think they become unhealthy when it becomes the main source of protein in our diet because they're they're a processed food. And then above and beyond that, they're very expensive. So you're always going to benefit by making your protein sources whole food plant-based. So beans, tofu, tempeh, uh, like that vegan sunflower ground beef that I talked about, the recipes in my book, anything like that is going to be a lot healthier for you than replacing one-to-one -one replacements with like the vegan meat products. Yeah, 100%. So what are your favorite, uh, some of your favorite recipes from, from the book? The ones that you're still like making, even though you're probably yeah. sick of the book by now? Yeah, so we make the Sunday sauce, which is this great veggie ground kind of bolognese sauce all the time. And it's one of those kitchen raid recipes where you can basically throw any vegetable in the food processor, throw it in your pan with tomato paste, a little soy sauce, nutritional yeast, lots of spices, oregano, and some lentils, walnuts, or a nut of choice. Sunflower seeds can work again. And you add crushed tomatoes and it makes like this beautiful thick pasta sauce. We also make the lemon peel pesto all the time. I've got this great salad that I have on repeat for lunch. It's called the saucy kale. And it has like, I'm a huge fan of kale. I know not everybody is, but I love kale. And it's curly kale. You massage it with some lemon juice. And then you add this like spicy tahini dressing with white beans, sun-dried tomatoes, um, hemp hearts. So delicious. For breakfast, we love the coffee ground granola. And I heard you talking that you're going to 
remix one of your granola recipes with coffee grounds. So I'm looking forward to seeing. Yeah, this. I, I like. You know what it is? It's just I. I think it's just the same as anyone that makes their own granola and has like gotten obsessed with their own recipe. Is this? Oh, yeah. no, one's, no one's just ever going to be the same. But what I loved about yours was like the coffee aspect and that little little extra kick it gave me and, and the cocoa. So for me, it's just like, I'll probably take my regular one and just add those elements, which I thought were so ingenious. Yeah, we make that a lot, like all the time. And then I usually will have a jar and like my husband will add it to his yogurt or whichever else. Desserts, we make the chickpea blondies all the time. I'm a huge fan of blondies. So I'm trying to think of what else, like I'm cooking from this book most most nights now. I find, I mean, I don't know about you, but as a Canadian, I'm a huge fan of soup. So I've got mm. like the leaky and minestrone that you guys made, um, the orange soup, as you, I think your daughter referred to it as. The weird orange yeah. soup. The weird orange soup. We make that a lot. Um, yeah, that's the, that's the yeah. Tuscan minestrone, right? Yeah, yeah. I really like that one. I just like how it's, and then sometimes we'll put tortellini in it. So it's like a vegan yeah. tortellini soup. Yeah, no. I just love again what I loved about that. Yeah, I know some people have made a couple comments that it's like Carly's not moving, but it's just I think there was a little internet glitch there, so her picture is a little bit delayed. But don't worry about it; we can still hear her lovely voice, and hopefully the the camera will catch up at some point. Um, but worry not. Uh, but what I loved about the the minestrone was that it's just like there's so many books where we see like a minestrone recipe, and I love that you put a spin on it. Right. Which I think is like so inherent of pretty much every recipe in this book. Like you're never just going to get the same cut and dry thing. Like there's always going to be that little Carly spin or that little plant you spin, however, however you want to brand it. But uh, I, that's what I think is so wonderful about, you know, pretty much every recipe in this book. Thank you so much. I try to when I'm recipe creating, I try to think about what can make this different. Right. Am I still frozen, by the way? What can I do here? It's a little bit. I don't know if it's just even, I don't want to make you log out and log back in. What's that? It's probably, I'm sure it's because I walked away and I'm sorry about that. Oh, I'll that's okay. <laughs> oh, the dog, you need to urinate. Yeah. <laughs> I was worried because the last one time I was doing a podcast interview like two weeks ago, and then she was doing the same thing. I could hear her like slamming herself. She'll like body slam herself across the window. She needs to get out. And then she went and peed on the couch. So I was like, oh my gosh, the poor thing. You know what we could try doing? Okay. If you want, I will, I'm going to, I'll walk some people through like a couple of the other great features of this book. If you want to just log out quickly and come back in, that might rejig it. Okay. I'll be right back. Yeah. So you do that. And while Carly's gone, I'm going to go on and on about this book a little bit more until she gets back, which is just being, see, there's that it's for her mama guys. Come on. Uh, so you've got the typical like index thing, but like I mentioned already, you've got that amazing, you know, got this, make that section, which is so unique, but which is great too uh, about the book is that she has all these, this whole section on food waste in here. Boom. See, fixed it. I'm a genius. Yay. Uh, I don't know what's going on there, but I'm well, glad. We're just back into gushing, so just sit tight and listen to me. <laughs> be your be your PR person. I'm just talking about like I love, and we'll talk about this right now. Food waste, but you've got this great section of like here's the problem with our world, and here's you know some things to think about, and everything from food storage. Uh, and again, we could talk. You and I could talk for an hour about any one of these things, but you know, over purchasing, best before dates, plastic. You've all heard me rant about plastic and. And, you know, the world's challenges with that. Um, and we talked about it a little bit at the beginning. We talked about, you know, that idea of the Flash Food app. And it's great that, you know, tech savvy people like, you know, that have our ideas but can actually do something with it are starting to recognize that there's a better way to do things with the food that's going to go to waste. And there's this great um, – have you ever been to Imperfect Eats, Carly? No, is that in Toronto? <laughs> yeah, there's a couple in Toronto. And what they do, which is, you're going to love this, is it's a restaurant that buys only the C-grade vegetables from, oh. like, growers and stuff. So the stuff that a, a, gro a restaurant would never buy, not restaurant, but, like, a, a grocery store would never buy because it's not pretty. You know, maybe maybe the it's a bit of a weird shape. And so because they're like, well, we're just going to turn this into burritos and bowls and wraps and other things. So they get it at a really low cost. They pass that, you know, 
price savings onto their customers and the food looks the same. Oh, that's amazing. I you love know? that. Yeah, so it's just more stuff like that that you can, you know, pass on the savings everyone and just create less food waste because, I mean, a lot of those vegetables that the farmers can't sell end up going in, you know, they feed animals and whatnot and, and you know, they turn into soil and th there's ways to use them. But so much of the ones that are in the middle uh, end up just going to waste and, and creating the methane we talked about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And whatnot. When I was going to ask you, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to ask you for your tips for people that are like looking to reduce their waste and, and just any, I'm sure you've got a million in your head just from the various interviews you've already done. I sure do. So the number one thing I like to preface this by saying is you don't need to be perfect. And I mean, I talk about this even when it comes to plant-based eating, but especially low waste eating, I still waste food. Some of it is unavoidable. And at the end of the day, I do not a proponent for eating mold. So this <laughs> is not about eating food that is spoiled. Once it's gotten to that point, it's, it's time to go. But the whole, the whole strategy here is not to let your food get to that point. And when we think about the fact that the average Canadian or American family is wasting upwards of $1,500 worth of food every year, so that's over $100 per month, and I think that statistic is probably higher than that, um, we can really close the gap on some of the inflation we've seen with groceries over the last few years by being more mindful about the food that we're eating. So the easiest way to do that is I tell people sit down on a Sunday or whatever time you do your grocery shopping and take 10 minutes, get a piece of paper out. You don't need a fancy cookbook or an app for this. Write down Monday to Friday and think about what you and your family or yourself are going to eat for the week. So breakfast, lunch and dinner. OK, um, dinner Monday, I'm going to make a curry and then I'm going to bring it for lunch Tuesday, whatever, leave some spontaneity in there if you're somebody who likes to go out to eat. And then from there, don't go to the grocery store yet, shop your fridge and pantry. So look in your pantry. I don't know, before I started really thinking about food waste, I had like 10 bags of Quaker oats in my cupboard because I would like be every time I went to the grocery store, I would think I would need oats. So you want to prevent overbuying, right? Because that creates waste because then the things expire. So shop your fridge and pantry, see what you already have, and then head to the grocery store with a list. Try to avoid impulse spending. And that's when we're buying things that we really don't need and we don't have a plan for. Then once you get home, it's great if you do a little bit of meal prep. It's okay if you don't and uh, try to store your food in a smart way. So one really great tip is if you're somebody who buys like a box of spinach each week, you can transfer it to a resealable glass container or plastic if that's what you have and add a slice of paper towel or a clean cloth and that's going to keep it fresher because it's absorbing the moisture. Store your cilantro and herbs like a bouquet in water. Um Potatoes should be in a dark place like a cellar or even a garage if you live in a temperament area. And yeah, those are like my top tips. But it, it really starts with not bringing the food into the house in the first place. So yeah. meal planning is the number one way that you're going to reduce your grocery bill. You also gave, uh, I was just listening while I was walking my dog this morning to your interview with Rip. Um Rip he's like he's like he, he's like the john lennon of of uh plant-based food right and you're the taylor swift by the way <laughs> that's what he said but no, okay. no I, yeah he said he said that in my last interview is like the he named it the taylor swift of um of food waste or something ridiculous nice. we were talking about taylor swift but anyways continue. but you uh you mentioned uh this great tip that i knew one of the two but i didn't know the other one of the idea of like not storing avocados and bananas together because the avocados can make them swell faster but you also mentioned tomatoes in there and you didn't say why tomatoes but what about tomatoes like what what does what what does what to the other one so tomatoes you want to store separate from everything so same way the same everything way, yeah like if you can because they, right they, they emit a gas and yeah. i don't know i the name of the gas is escaping me but it will make your other food spoil quicker so you want to keep things like separate if you're keeping them on your counter because they will cause each other to spoil but that is one tip with the avocados will make your bananas ripen quicker so if you want like your bananas to to ripen that's one tip yeah. It's, it's the same gas. Like I one didn't of know the tomato thing. I knew the other ones. Didn't know the tomatoes. Now I got to move all my tomatoes. Yeah. 
Uh, just, I just wanted to point this out quickly. Like, literally, everyone here is talking about how oh, that's not it. That's a Spanish comment. No, well, that's good. how about your book and how they're either getting it or it's on its way. Literally every every other person. Thank you person. so much. Thank you so much. So so much. You, I do like a happy dance every time somebody orders the book. Inside, you must, you must dance a lot. I do a lot. <laughs> I imagine that thing's flying off the shelves. Um. So to that point, let's jump into. Uh, let's answer some of your questions here because I know we've got a bunch of things piling up. I'd love to get to, and some of them are just comments I've I've highlighted because I know. Carly will appreciate them. Uh, well, you kind of already answered this a little bit, but maybe I'll throw it up anyway. Tammy's asking, how do you create all, do you create all the recipes yourself? Do you have a team? How do you create so many amazing recipes? So I know you already mentioned you work with your sister a little bit, but maybe like, I mean, answer this however you want to, but maybe another way to approach this is like, you know, where does inspiration come from? Yeah, absolutely. So I do have a team, um, but they don't, it's like it, it's sometimes a, I have this great blog writer named Kat and she's really into fermenting. So she will assist me in anything fermentation because I'm worried about the scientific aspect of it. So there's like people that will help me, but I'm creating all of the recipes to their finality, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. And all of the recipes in the book. In terms of where I take inspiration, I mean, there's so many great creators online now. So like oftentimes I'll just go on my Instagram feed and scroll through reels and like, I'll be like, oh, that looks good. And oftentimes it's from not vegan food. So I'll look like, oh, that person used chicken in this great like salad. I'm going to try it with chickpeas, you know? Um, so often it will take inspiration from non-vegan food or stuff I grew up eating that I want to make plant-based. That's like my number one. And then my sister's more so helping me annotate. So like I have a problem and I'm sure you can relate is like when I'm cooking, I'll just be like, I'm going to add some more nutritional yeast. She's like, how much nutritional yeast did you just add? And you're like a sprinkle. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so she, she helps annotate more than anything, which is like very needed, very needed in the process. Yeah. It reminds me, uh, you know, and I think of you as like such a creative a tour of a filmmaker the way I think of like myself as a director and the idea like the role of a director on any project is you've got all these people you're working with yes but all the ideas got to flow through you and you're the one that goes yeah or yes but let's pivot to that and I, I wonder if it's um, it feels like it's that way with you where it's like you've got this Carly filter this plant you filter where you're like I don't do that so that won't work that's a great idea but let me just pivot it a bit and it feels like exactly. that's kind of almost how you work exactly how I work. And I mean, it takes a village, I think, like, especially from start to finish with something like a cookbook, between the recipe tester, myself, my sister, Kat, who helped with fermenting, recipes, <laughs> just like all becomes like one thing, but kind of starting here and pouring out. Yeah. So we've sense. already kind of, you already answered this to some extent, but I wanted to throw Eleanor's question up anyway. But maybe I'll pivot this question, because the answer is yes, all the all pretty much everything in your in your recipe books is oil free, correct? Except for one recipe, we use puff pastry in the book, and I have not found a puff pastry. Have you ever done puff pastry that's oil free? I've seen the recipes online, and I just go, I don't have half a day to yes. put towards making that. Yes. So there's a puff pastry, like they're these great, like mini Wellingtons, and they use yeah. store bought vegan puff pastry, which I can guarantee is not oil free. And then a couple of the recipes recommend oil, one of them being smashed potatoes, but I have an alternative. Yeah. Um, so, but to that, let me add to that just so people can get a sense of it too. Why, why, what made you, what inspired you to make a book that focuses with no oil? So really my first book, it was because I was coming from this space where I was so inspired by people who really talked about the benefits of oil-free cooking. So like the Esselstyns and Chef AJ and Dr. Greger and Dr. Furman. And it, I just felt like that was a great thing for our heart health and um, for maintaining weight. So that was my first cookbook. And then after my first cookbook came out, my ideology on oil did shift a bit. So I do use oil more now in my cooking, but I knew so many people 
loved the first cookbook and were reliant on the recipes being oil free. So I wanted to provide the option because I'm, I'm a big believer you don't need oil in cooking. Um, so that's why I continued it with my second one because I really, I feel like the plant based community wanted it and it, it, it was necessary to kind of to make the recipes adaptable in that way. Yeah. And it's almost like everyone knows you can cook with oil. Exactly. So it's nice to have a book that goes, yeah, but you also don't have to. Yeah. Do you cook with oil at all? No. no. None. The only time I use oil is for flavor. So if I make like sesame oil, we'll use. Like we'll use it on like. Yeah. Because it adds like that dirty takeout yeah. vibe that you yeah. just can't get otherwise. Right. So yeah. we'll use it for that. But I just don't think I need it for anything. You, know? you don't need it. And that's the thing, right? And I think if we're, I mean, I don't ever really talk about weight loss on my platform, but if you're talking about weight loss and weight maintenance, it's crazy to me that people do not bring up oil as the number one thing in these conversations, just by the fact that a tablespoon of oil is over a hundred calories and it's so easy to remove from your food and makes literally no difference. Yeah. And, and for me and you, that's a hundred raspberries almost. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I remember that was the biggest thing when I was losing my weight because I uh, went on a big, I don't know if you know this about me, but I, I saw a YouTube video. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that was one of the big aha moments with oil. I was like, wait a minute. I can, it's that, that little, little bitty oil. It's the same as like a banana and a half. I'd rather have the banana. Or a cookie. Or a cookie. That's just, if I'm going to eat know, it. That was a big thing for me. I'm like, I would rather, it's not that I don't want to eat. It's I would rather have the cookie. I'd rather have that. Well, that's just it. And so for me, I was always like, well, if I'm if I'm gonna eat the calories, I want it to like fill me up. I don't want it to just like coat my vegetables and not really add anything besides maybe a little bit of crisp. But I could I'd argue between air fryers and you know other tricks like using aquafaba and stuff like that. It's like there's there's, there's a million really ways to get crisp. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. So this is just more of a love thing. They love your format. Again, talking, going back to that infographic style that I already expressed infinite love for, but uh, I'll give, let someone else go. Look what happened here. So this is, Kimberly is one of our, she's always around. Blind Kimberly, who has a seeing impediment, is buying this book. Oh, Kimberly, I wish it had Braille. Maybe one day. <laughs> the Braille version? Yeah, they, I wonder, there's gotta be some cookbooks with braille right that's uh but maybe not plant-based ones but thank you her husband's gonna help her out perfect it's gonna be all good thank you kimberly that's amazing um what's your favorite dessert in the book you're gonna die but it's the wacky cake <laughs> you, know why? you know why it's because I am like a very particular person about chocolate cake and I don't like like an overly sweet icing like yeah chocolate cake i like like a dry chocolatey cake and i find it so easy i was dying so if, if you guys haven't watched jeremy's video his family was not a fan i wouldn't i wouldn't say not a fan you know what was funny it was like half of us liked the cake and not the icing and then the other half liked the icing yeah. and the cake <laughs> it was so weird i've never seen that with our family before we're usually Especially with desserts, it's it's hard to find a dessert that we're not all like someone on board with. So that was that was such a weird. My mother in law though, whose re reaction I just barely put in, she grew up in the Depression era and she loved it. I'm eager to see <laughs> what other people think of it. But after your review, I was like, it's really not what you would expect from a chocolate cake. Mm. So I fully understood, but I. That's the type, uh, you know what it was kind of reminded me of, which I loved growing up, was like the deep dish McCain chocolate cakes. Yes. Canadian deep dish. That was my favorite cake. So that that's gives what, kind of like an idea. That's what we said after. I was like, this kind of reminds me of a, of a, a whole food plant-based deep and delicious. Yeah. That's exactly like if I w would want a cake, that's what I want it to be like. I don't know why. It's weird. Oh, I get it. We once said we let our kids go to the corner store. We gave them like six bucks to buy like whatever dessert they want. And they came back with a deep and delicious. We're like, that's not what we meant. They're like, it was six bucks. It's like, okay. Fair enough. <laughs> this was my, I, I got to say, like this, and we, this one we reviewed as well might be my favorite from the book that we tried so far. Yeah. It just blew my mind, like the idea of a spicy cookie. 
Yeah. I took that to a board game night and it was much loved by a bunch of a uh, bunch of hardcore nerd gamers too. So I'm craving those now. I might make them tonight. It's so especially if you like a little bit of heat with your chocolate, a little bit of chili powder. It's uh, the uh, uh, the tip that my my kids said to make it a real hot chocolate one, put some vegan marshmallows in there. I know I saw that and I was like, that's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. 100 percent Need some dandies marshmallows in there. Yeah, get some dandies marshmallows in there. Uh, all right. What's uh oh yay? Terry took your advice, Maisie. Yeah, for all those people that don't do it yet, like please start saving your veggie scraps. If you don't want to cook with them, at least put them in a bag in your freezer. Make your own broth. It's the it's the number one thing you can save money on because it literally is free. Yeah, it's free and it's delicious. It, and all it takes is a little bit of time. I like to say it's like a vegan bone broth, like all those nutrients from the veggies. It's fabulous. It's so good. Yeah, my wife's obsessed because she's just like a little bit of lemon. She's just running around in the kitchen like a <laughs> their and favorite thing. Like someone who measures either. She needs an annotator. <laughs> no, well, you don't even need it for the – every time the broth is a little bit different based yeah. on what the scraps are in there. But it's so great because it's another way to use up that those sad herbs that are going bad. Uh, not bad, you know, don't put them in if they're, they're getting moldy, but, you know, anything. And, al and always a little bit of lemon. Throw some, always lemon needs to go yeah, in there. Yeah. A little bit acidic. Uh, so love for the broth. This is a little, I think I agree with this, Dominique. I think she's just going through your book right now and she, she's reacting in real time. I love it. Yeah, that's a great one where you marinate the chips. It's, it's similar to the tofu situation. And if you're buying, you know, pickles anyway which and you people know i have a t-shirt that says if you don't like pickles we can't be friends um it's, it's in the on the, it's in our merch store you can buy it but uh it's, I love that. It's, free, it's free marinade yeah i love that yeah. yes it's free marinade and it's delicious yeah one of my favorite recipes and, and we did it in the review was your your pickled tennessee tenders mm -hmm. and it, it was one of those moments i looked at it and was like damn you carly why have i never thought to just like marinate just throw the tofu in the pickle juice yeah it's so That's simple perfect. and it, it really gives like a nice flavor nice nice kind of subtle pickly flavor yeah exactly it's just beautiful subtle and then i used it and i did it with some chips too i think we did that in the recipe as well we we added the chips uh janet's got a question uh this is something i probably would have asked you anyway do you have another project or book next time Rich, the ridiculous question so close to your launch but it, it oh, is something I anyway. but what, what's always. next always I've got like five books in my head. Um, I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah, yeah. And, but I think I need to take like a little bit of a break after this. It's I'm been just, such a, oh, such a. You need an emotional, a physical, <laughs> check all the things. <laughs> Probably need some therapy. So I'm going to take a little bit of a break, but I will no doubt be writing more books. So I'm excited. Yeah. I don't know what they'll be. Obviously okay. not scrappy, but I do have a few ideas in my head. Yeah. But are you, is your plan, like you've kind of, you're kind of, you're going to keep the plant you title yeah. of it all, right? Yeah. I think my publisher would have, would faint if I told them I'm drop. if I told them I'm dropping the plant you title, or if I'm told them I'm moving away from the infographics, they would probably be like, no. No, you've got, and it's just, it's yeah. just, well, and I don't know why you would. It's just so, it's just, you know, so simple. And so you, and because you built this wonderful little brand you know, without probably even, if it, I bet you it was without even thinking about it, right? You were just, you yeah. instinctively, working instinctively. Exactly. Like I remember when I was starting Plant You, I just went on godaddy.com, which is for anybody who doesn't know what that is. It's like a website URL where you find website domains. And I just started typing in words with the word plant. So it's like when I bought the domain plant pirate, plant-based pirate, like I don't know what I was doing. And um, then Plant You, I was like, whoa, this is available. Looked on Instagram, the handle was available, and the rest is history. So there was no <laughs> there was no rhyme or reason, but I'm stuck with it now. So it's all. That was, that was the same thing with the PBWJ. First of all, I like the fact that PBWJ.ca rhymed for the Canadian. Yeah, that's really nice. Um, but also, I, just, I was shocked that it was available, so I, I snatched it up, and now I'm stuck with it. Well, no, no, it's good, though. It's uh, so Christy says, is as I uh, saw on your YouTube shorts and you made fruit leather and said you could dehydrate in the sun. Yes. How do you do that? 
Yeah. So you really need to live in a climate where it's warm and there's ideally not a lot of bugs around, but you can literally put the sheet pan. Like you threw in ideally not a lot of bugs. Well, as a Canadian, like what do we have one month probably? You can make these in August. Yeah, you can make them in August. Um, So yes, like if you live somewhere, I don't know, like California in the summer and you can put them up high. So just elevate it. And exactly like an oven. So you'll put it in your oven in the lowest setting for a couple of hours. This will probably take a day and just let it sit there um, on a sheet pan. And I've seen people put like nets around them and stuff, but I don't think it would dry as well. So, yeah. Uh, Oh, uh, I think, sorry, I'm just queuing up questions here. Uh, Oh, someone just letting us know the, the plant hormone for those that are have been watching the whole time uh, that ripens is, is just ethanol. Oh no, ethylene. Yes. Ethylene, ethylene. Yes. Apples, tomatoes, and avocados. But does that mean you can put those three things together? Maybe, but I don't think so. Cause I often keep those three things in the same space. You do? Yeah. And, and the bananas are not close. They're neighbors. The bananas live down the street. But uh, I don't mind them getting ripe because I, I love it when they get ripe because then it just means I can turn them into stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I have to think that you could store those together. Yeah. Because if they're all emitting, for some reason, I thought that the tomatoes, not the biggest food storage expert, like I do yeah. my best, That's but okay. I thought tomatoes were different gas than the avocados. But if they're all the same, then in theory, yeah, it's like, it's off like- of each other. Yeah, it's like when you get COVID, you can hang out with the rest of your family because you've all got the <laughs> <laughs> and you've all you've all got the same thing. Uh, so you've already you already did Chef AJ recently, is this correct? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I did Chef AJ I think two weeks ago, and I adore her. She is lovely, lovely, lovely. She really, really, really is lovely. So uh, I love to ask you some of the questions I ask everyone because I always love to get different people's opinions on this. You're stuck on a desert island, Carla. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to, to tell you this. You got stuck on a desert island. But, but, and you can recreate your kitchen, but they're only letting you have three kitchen tools. And you can use tool in whatever way you want. It can have a lot. There's magical electricity here. So if you need electricity, you got it. Uh, assume you already have a fridge and ways to store your food. Um, but you're only allowed to have three, like, let's say major tools or appliances to cook with. What do you, what are you asking for? I'll let you already have a knife. You already got a knife. Oh, I already have a knife. You got a knife and things to stir and whatnot and, and, and pots and pans. You got all those things. Okay. Okay. Air fryer. I have like the, a fold down Ninja air fryer and we use it more than our oven. It's really big. So it covers a lot of surface area and I just find like for tofu and everything, it's incredible. Um, that would be number one. So if I've got p- pots and pans, like I need a stove top. I think a stove top is necessary for. You got the stove top. I gave I you the. the we, we built you a fire. It's real it's super efficient. I don't use anything fancy, to be honest. My air fryer, I use all the time. Pots, pans, stove, knife, cutting board. If I don't. So that's it. Just the air fryer and those basics. No, but I can imagine. If I was actually, I would be scrambling and bringing something else. Coffee. Yeah, you're, gonna, you're gonna you're gonna get there and be real pissed. You didn't bring a food processor. Oh, food processor, blender, <laughs> Vitamix. Yeah, blender, food processor, air fryer. Yeah, there you go. I don't know why my mind didn't go there for the uh, blender. I was I, I was gonna let you get on that island and. <laughs> As I'm driving away, I'd hold it up and be like, you forgot this. Uh, yeah, I've just taken the air fryer. <laughs> it wouldn't be good. No. <laughs> so if someone's starting off eating this way, you know, uh, and they're just going to the store and they're on a budget. And for the first trip out, and they're going to be able to buy stuff on multiple trips. So don't worry about that. They can get five, five like, must-have pantry essentials. What are you telling them to stock up on? Chickpeas. Um chickpeas, rice, whole grain pasta, nutritional yeast I use a lot, and a can of lentils, or no, diced tomatoes. Mm. I think that with those staples, if you have some vegetables, you can make like basically anything. Yeah. Not anything, but like 
most things. Yeah, and it's great. And all those things are shelf stable, like you said. And what's good about diced tomatoes is if you don't like diced tomatoes, just blend them up. Exactly. Well, they can be made into a sauce. They can be made into a stew, a soup, a, or a curry. So that's kind of where my mind went with that. Yeah, and lentils are such a great diverse thing because it's like you can make, make them really mushy and turn them into like I'm gonna make our loaded nachos tonight, and I always make like a Mexican lentil with that. Oh yeah, that sounds amazing. Yeah, and that's just literally cooking lentils in the instant pot with like Mexican spices, and it's just like instant like ground, you know, cheap, super lazy, easy ground beef. Oh, that sounds amazing. Yeah. I uh, love those answers. And the thing about nutritional yeast that I always kind of knew this a little bit, but didn't really like a, a serving of nutritional yeast is in theory, three tablespoons, which is it's a lot, <laughs> but it's one of the most protein like efficient foods. And we don't think oh. about it like three tablespoons of nutritional yeast, which is probably more than you would sprinkle on top of something is 11 grams of protein. But I put that in everything, you know, <laughs> like if I have pasta sauce or I'm making a soup or anything like that, I'm putting in at least three tablespoons. The only thing is it can be expensive. So I like to try and buy it when it's on sale or in bulk, but. So buy and sell in bulk. But a little goes a long way too, yeah, right? It does. And I remember when I had first tried it, and this is something I would say to anybody going plant-based, is like give things some second try. Things I didn't like was tofu and nutritional yeast, and now I eat them every day. <laughs> Whenever I hear someone's like, oh, I don't know what tofu, I'm like, you just have, like, they're just yeah, picture up a lot. Tofu. Exactly. Yeah. Like, would that's, you know, have, have, you know, people that don't cook with tofu picture it as like a block of just white blob. And then people that do, they, when they see tofu, they see like a chocolate cream pie. Yeah. I see, see like general Tao's tofu. Like, I see like takeout food almost when I think of tofu, you know, I'm not thinking about a white block of like nothing. It, and I tell people to compare it to chicken, right? Like you're never just having like a slice of chicken with nothing on Dry it. Dry ass yeah, yeah. <laughs> chicken. You're always going to have something on it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, we've taken a ton of your time, Carly, and this is your release day. So I, I could talk to you for hours and hours and hours. Uh, and we'll, we'll chat for a minute after this. Yes. Well, sorry, everyone. You don't get our private conversation. But I'd love, I, I've already got some information down below, but where else can people find you? So I'm Plant You everywhere, P-L-A-N-T-Y-O-U. I am on YouTube. I'm on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and I have a website, plantyou.com. And I'm surely talking about the book all over the place there. But if you want to go and buy the book right now, you can buy it at scrappycookbook.com. And I have so much gratitude to everybody who came here today, listened to us yammer on here, and especially you, Jeremy, for your great questions and interview skills. This is so much fun. Well, thank you. It's been an honor. You, you've been my heroes for a long time. So uh, my goal today was to turn you into a friend. <laughs> Yeah, uh, goal achieved. Yeah, it was a blast. Thank All right, you. well, thank you everyone who is watching live or who is watching after the fact. Um, I'll be back here next week with another interview with somebody else. Uh, so please check in for that. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so down below, obviously. And hit like so other people can be sent this interview to watch here on the tube of the U. Um, thanks, everyone. <laughs>